Good morning, friends. Welcome into my channel. My name is Sherry. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be making a fabric cover today for a daily December that I'm just about to start. So I thought I would walk you through, first of all, how I make my covers when I do fabric covers so that you can sort of see a start to finish hopefully throughout the journey of the making of this daily December, which should only take us a few videos to get done. In my, in my opinion, it shouldn't take us all that long. So anyway, we're gonna start today with building the cover. I have already pre-cut my fabric. I chose this. I didn't have a lot of Christmas fabric to choose from, and I wanted to use what I had. So I really thought this was pretty and I have pre-cut it. I use um, manila envelopes as my base and they measure 12 by nine. So I have cut my fabric to 11 by 14. That gives me an inch all the way around each one to fold over and make a nice clean edge. We're also going, and I have this white piece of paper here just so I don't get glue on my desk. I spent a lot of time last week cleaning glue adhesive off of my mat, and I really don't want to do it again anytime soon. But let me tell you, if you do have to do that, white vinegar, or any kind of vinegar, I just had white vinegar, um, I saw to use a magic eraser sponge, which I had an older one, but it started disintegrating on me. So I just ended up using a regular dish scrubby, the scrubby side of a, of a dish um, sponge. And after several times of soaking it with the vinegar and scrubbing, I got all the adhesive off. So I'm trying to be very careful. So there's a tip for you if you don't know that. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first thing we're gonna do, we have to take out these pesky little, I wish I could find the ones that just have the, you know, the peel strips now, like a lot of the envelopes do, but I can't find those. I've been looking and I'm not sure. Well, I didn't look too hard. I looked at the Dollar Tree, so. I may have been able to find them elsewhere, but that's where I looked and so. Right now I'm just using, I've got a stack of them, so I'm just using what I have. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a little glue stick. Seal this up. I typically make this the inside of my journal. No particular reason, it just, that's kind of how I started doing it that way, so I just stuck with it. This glue stick is not the greatest. It's just from the Dollar Tree. Um, we live, I mean, I can order, I do a lot of Amazon and, and Walmart ordering, but um, <coughs> pardon me, readily available to me. We don't have like craft stores and things like that. So I just used what I could find. Um, I do like the Scotch brand. And they used to carry it, funny thing, at my local Vons, but they don't have it anymore. So next time I order, when I run out of what I have, I'll order something off a little better off Amazon. So we've determined this is gonna be the inside. We're gonna cover both of these. We're gonna end up sewing them together. Now I am gonna have to take a break. Let me watch about 10 more minutes. I have vegetables roasting in the oven. So the reason I have vegetables roasting in the oven is because um, the other day I had a cauliflower to use and some random peppers, sweet peppers and stuff. So I decided to make just a, a like a roasted cauliflower soup. And um, so that's going to be the inside. We're going to put batting on the outside. So I made said soup and my friends loved it. My husband didn't get any, however, he's not the hugest soup fan in the world, but he may actually like it, I'm not sure. But anyway, 
I had some friends over for lunch, so we ate the soup and they absolutely loved it. And my daughter, I watched my youngest grandson Cove yesterday for a couple hours while Molly helped in writer's class. And um, when she came to pick Cove up, I asked her if she wanted some soup because I was getting ready. I had the last of it warming up and she said she would have some with me. Well, Cove and Aspen absolutely loved it. And she, my youngest granddaughter Aspen, asked me if I would make her more today. And I just happened to have everything I needed. And I said, I will absolutely make you more of that soup today. So that's why my vegetables are roasting and I just have to keep an eye on the time so that I just go pull my veggies out of the oven. But I'm giving them a really good roasting. I want them to kind of caramelize a little bit. So what I'm using here is Fabric Fusion. It's what I got, I believe I got it like at probably Joann's or Michael's or something. That's what I had on hand. And um, I did just order some Fabri-Tac, but um, let me grab a paper towel. But I'm using up what's open now. So this is Fabric Fusion. I've used it for years. I've never found it to be a problem. So anywho, that's what I'm using. And I'm just trying to keep straight here so I'm in shot for you guys. Especially with this big piece of white here. So all I'm going to do is sort of the best of my ability, try to center it so I've got about an inch on all sides so that when we wrap the corners, we're fairly even. And I think that looks pretty good. Got a little glue there, which is no big deal. And then you just want to smoosh it on there. Smoosh it good. Sometimes I'll do a different fabric on the inside, but uh, for this project, I just decided to do inside and outside the same. So what I'm gonna do now is just turn this over. And you will see, like right now, you'll see some glue through the material. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up on it, but that eventually goes away. And then you end up doing other stuff anyway. Whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie. Let's see, that happens. It's okay, it's okay, we don't need to panic. Everything is fine. That's the inside anyhow. So that's our inside. We're gonna set that aside to dry and we're gonna do the outside. So this is our outside, and I've already double checked to make sure that the batting is going to fit. Now, all, all of my batting right now is just scraps, so it just happened to work out that this one, it, co <clears throat> excuse me, it covers it enough. It doesn't have to cover 100%. It's just to give it a little extra fluff for the front cover. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna lay this on, get the towel out of the way, if I can manage to do that. And I'm gonna glue and I'm not going all the way to the center if you I mean to the edges because I'm gonna be sewing. And this basically is just enough to hold it in place. It's not anything. That is crucial, just a matter of holding that in place. If you've got a little that runs over the edge like I do, just go ahead and take your fabric scissors and just snip it off. It'd be fine. And then now what we want to do is lay our front cover. So we're, that's going to be our front. So again, I'm just going to go ahead, flip my fabric over. Do have some strings here, but we can deal with those. And then we're gonna take our fabric tack again. And again, we're gonna go just sort of in the middle, just to hold it. We're not gonna get the edges. Take and flip it again so that we have approximately half an inch, I mean an inch on either side. 
it doesn't have to be perfect. If it isn't, that's okay. Looks like we can trim up a little bit more of this. Just real quick while we're right here. Deal with that. <clears throat> Again, just give it a good smoosh. Cover our fabric fusion back up. Give it a good smoosh. Turn it over and just smooth it out. And what I had left from cutting this, I believe I got this probably at the thrift store. All right, now we're gonna switch back. I'm gonna put you on hold for a moment while I run and check my veggies. Okay, I'm back. Veggies are out of the oven and cooling. So now what we're gonna do is just miter our corners so that we can get a nice wrap around the edges. You could save those little pieces if you feel that you'd like to use them or would have a use for them. Again, just mitering all four sides, all four corners. You're not going to see these because the these will be sewn together. Remember, this is the inside of the <clears throat> the inside of the journal. So basically, what we will do is we'll just take our glue and we'll wrap the corners. So let's go ahead and start with this edge since we're here. And again, I don't come all the way to the edge edge here because we will be sewing there. So. Now, have I probably sewn over Fabri-Tac? Yes, I definitely have. Do I recommend it? No. My nails are already a wreck, so it doesn't matter the fact that I'm using Fabri-Tac right now, because if you don't know, if you're not aware, Fabri-Tac is acetone-based glue adhesive. And what do you take nail polish off with? Acetone. So... If you've just manicured your nails and you're going on a special date or somewhere, I wouldn't recommend playing around with the Fabri-Tac or the Fabric Fusion until you can get them messed up. Because it's awfully hard to do anything like this without getting your nails involved. I really do like the red and the gold of this fabric. I think it's really pretty. This edge, even then with a little bit of paper, I still managed to get glue on my desk. So if you've never done a cover like this, maybe it will give you an idea on how to do a fabric covered journal cover. It's usually my go-to for covers is usually fabric. Nine times out of 10, well, maybe seven out of 10. <laughs> Might be more exact, but. I do them sometimes with paper and Mod Podge and that kind of thing, digitals or <clears throat> jelly prints, things like that. But most of the time it's fabric or if not a, a book, you know. Okay, I'm gonna just set that there for a second, recenter us here and give my hands a little <clears throat> wipe so because they get so sticky with this stuff. So, so sticky. Fabric Fusion and Fabri-Tac are very sticky glue. Very sticky glues. All right, now we can bring our cover back over Set this guy aside, edge of the desk. So I'm sorry, I have not asked you all, how is everyone doing today? I hope you are well. I am. I have you zoomed out a little bit more than I sometimes do, but I, I did that so that you could really be sure and see what I'm doing here. 
<clears throat> so again, we're just going to miter the corners. Yeah, I hope you're all well today. I'm doing good so far. I was going to watch my grandson again, but I uh, had a little, I didn't feel too great this morning. And his dad is home anyway. And Molly's going on a field trip with Aspen to Asp Apple Hill Ranch. I think it's her first, um, she's in preschool, so it's her first field trip. So she was pretty excited about it yesterday. But Daddy's home. He was just going to do some yard work and stuff. But, I said, you know, I think maybe I might need to take a little break today. <coughs> and a lot of times on Thursday I'll clean, so I'm not even really going to clean that much today. I think I'm going to break it up. My husband will be home tomorrow. So I think I might do some dusting and I'm going to kind of do my cleaning between today and tomorrow but for right now crafting just sounded like much more fun to me <clears throat> and I wanted to get this project going so we can see how fun this kit this kit that we're working with is from Joey Cardmaker he's on Etsy he's got beautiful digitals downloadable digitals I've done several of his kits in fact, the last kit I did was a Joey card maker. It was a fall, kind of an autumn kit. <clears throat> I did do a video on that, so I'll try to link that for you. And if you haven't seen the flip through video of this digital kit, I'll link that. I'll put that in the end card for you. And that just walks you through sort of what's in the kit if you want to take a look at it. If you're considering purchasing a Christmas kit, this is one I would definitely highly recommend. Um, Joey is a sweetheart, wonderful person to work with. He also has a website called Kofi, K-O-F-I dot com slash backslash Joey Card Maker, where he provides free digital downloads, some free digital downloads, and you can like buy him a coffee and, you know, just a really cool little little place so do check him out tell him sherry sent you <laughs> so yeah i think i'm gonna get that soup made so i have to send some with my daughter since aspen requested more of my soup and cove really liked it so molly really liked it and then i think my girlfriends also want some if there's enough <laughs> so i got out my big huge stock pot Hopefully I'll be able to make enough to keep everybody happy. I told the girls, my friends, that I, and my girls too, I would, of course. But um, I will try to write down a recipe. However, I didn't go from a recipe. So <clears throat> a lot of my cooking is just getting in the kitchen and just going. And my, my girls are used to that because they're forever... Mom, can I have your recipe for so-and-so or so-and-so? <laughs> well, I really don't have one. Just sort of get in there and go. All right, so now we have... <clears throat> Sorry about my voice being so crunchy today. Now we have our front cover and our back cover together. This is the inside of our journal. And this is the outside of our journal. And we'll be putting corners on, so even though there's a little bit of an uneven, you could you could even just cut that off if you wanted. So any little tidying up you feel that you need to do, you can take care of. But like I said, we will put page corners on. So while these dry, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to move this because it's got a little bit of glue on it clean off my mat just a little bit what I had left from <clears throat> that I'm sure that was like a um what do they call it a fat quarter or something so this is what I had left so I've got possible fabric flip and I don't know something for a belly band maybe so let's just give this a wipe down 
and then we're gonna start working on the pages. And probably in today's video, we'll at least get the two covers sewn together, but I do wanna let that glue dry a little bit. So this is how I keep my kits. So what we're gonna do is, I already know that's gonna be the center of the signature. So I still have to tear these edges off too. A lot of times I'll do that off camera, but sorry guys, I didn't do that. Didn't do that today. So I think what I'll do is, let's make sure I have these yet. Yeah, five, six, seven, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, no wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I thought there were 16. Okay. 16, 17, because that's the center. All right, guys, we are back. Um, I've gone ahead and cut the white borders off of all of my digitals. So those are all ready to sew or get ready to put in the journal, but I wanna complete the cover first. So we're gonna do that now. And I know you can see the glue on here, but by the time this journal gets finished, you won't. We'll probably put some sort of topper on here and eventually it you don't even see it. So if you're picking that up on the camera, just know that. So that's gonna be the inside. So now would be the time probably to decide if you wanted a pocket on the inside, because this is the outside, this will be the inside, and it'll get folded over together. So if you wanted a pocket, which I think I do, now is the time to go ahead and figure that out while you can still, before you sew around the outside is what I'm trying to say. Pretty sure that's going to make a really pretty pocket. I've used this before and I really like it. So let's go ahead and cut right here. Sometimes lace is hard to cut straight. And then keep all these little pieces because all of these little pieces are going to be good for snippets or making little clusters. So what we'll do by doing this step now, you don't see the stitching in of the pocket. I need to get some more thick lace like this. I tend to use a lot of it, but I don't have a lot of big lace like that. So must go on the hunt for that. So we're just gonna go ahead and stitch Come down here, cross here. We might put, it wouldn't hurt to put just a little dot of Fabri-Tac maybe here and here just to help hold it, but we don't wanna put it so low that we sew over it. So it won't hurt just a little dot there, little dot there little dot there and a little dot there and we won't even sew on over it so let me go ahead and get that sewn on take me two shakes of a lamb's tail and i will be back okay we've got the uh pocket sewn on i just did a straight stitch and i did back stitch at the two top corners here because there'll be pockets so it's just reinforced and so now we can go ahead and glue our, I mean glue, we can sew <laughs> our covers together. You can pin them if you choose. I might put a couple pins, it doesn't hurt. 
and then I would just take it slow. You don't want to rush your machine. And I generally, I'll show you where I start. Just, hey, Willow. Oh, my dog is in here stealing my paper towels. Why are we taking, hey, 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 silly girl. What are you doing that for? Now is when you're going to want to determine, um, well, you already know where your back is because your pocket is here. So what I'm going to want to do is I generally start right here in the very back. Yeah, I'll generally start in the very back corner here because that way, if you mess it up or anything goes kaflooey there at first, it's on the very back corner of your journal, not on the front. So let's go ahead and get this sewn, up, sewn together. All right, so now we have sewn around the entire cover. <coughs> We've got the pocket sewn in, and not only are we enforced with reinforced with back stitching, we're also reinforced with now another stitch around. So one more step we're gonna do today, we're gonna call this a video so we can basically say we've got our cover started. And if you end up with anything that is a little bit wonky, all you have to do is trim it up. Remember, it's a junk journal, it's not meant to be perfect. We are not perfect around here. That is definitely for sure. Um, those hung down just a little bit, which really wouldn't have been a big deal. I probably wouldn't have minded, but. I was just snipping a little, so decided to snippy there, just a skosh. Um, but the last thing I want to do, because I like to get my corners nice and squared up and pretty, is we're going to go ahead and put on our page corners. So we're going to get our cover folded in two half as best we can. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a junk journal. But I do like putting the book cover corners on. I feel that it really does add something and they look nice. And then you've got nice, clean, tidy edges where you cannot see the envelope, envelopes through there. Let's grab four, one, two, three, and four, perfect. And what I like to do on these is I like to give them a little bit of glue and make it my little tool here. I have tools. Is that the right one? No. How come the one I need is always right at the bottom? I don't get that. So you can sort of just give a little check and see if there's anything you need to cut off. And then what I like to do is take my art glitter glue and put a little bit in here. It just helps to hold. I feel like it helps to hold the corner on and you don't end up seeing it at all anyway. So then just push it down the best you can. If you feel the need, I have little pliers here that I'll usually crimp it down a little bit tighter with. Get it a little tighter than what I can with my hands. So that we know that is on there well. I'll do the other corner just to make sure Looks like there might be a little fabric that could possibly stick out right there. We can snip. I just feel like these just finish off the edges nicely. That's that's just me. You don't have to. I don't put them on all of my journals. I've definitely made a lot of journals without them. But in this case, I wanted to do it. Okay, so that one's on really nice. Let's check this one. I'm gonna probably trim up this little bit of material here, or lace, so that it's not in our way. Just since it's a corner there. Yeah, that'll be fine. Again, put a little bit of um, glue, a little bit of art glitter glue, and oops, lay it down flat. T trying to make sure that my lace is underneath there when I tuck that down so as not to be sticking up. 
And then off camera, what I will do is um, I will sew around any pages of the journal that I decide I want to uh, sew around. That way, when we come back, we don't have to take time doing that. We can just get back to building our journal. So I hope you found this helpful today. <clears throat> if you've never done fabric on a journal or you've wondered how to do fabric, that's the way I like to do them. You can use Amazon packaging. You can use cereal boxes cut to size. You can use chipboard. There's many ways to do it, but this is my preferred method that I do most of the time. So now we've got our nice book corners on. See how nicely they just finish off those edges. And by the time this thing goes to, whoops, by the time this thing goes together, it's going to be pretty big and fat anyway. So, all right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. If you have not already, please consider scribing, subscribing and giving me that thumbs up and hit that little notification bell and do be that will alert you when I do pick back up and we continue work on our December daily um, junk journal from the digitals from Joey Cardmaker. And um, I think it's going to be a beautiful one. So, all right, you guys, thanks for watching. We'll pick back up next time and we'll get the signature, the papers together and the signature put in. And then we can start on the rest. All right. Thanks for watching. Take good care. Bye-bye.